Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our videos. Today I'm going to be showing you and reviewing for you this Ansel AD610 Elite ABS and airbag reset tool. Uh, as far as the demo is concerned, I'm not going to be demoing the ABS and airbag functions, but I will go over them in the video. What I'm going to be demonstrating for you is how the unit operates, how to power it up, as well as how to check a trouble code on a vehicle because I happen to have a broken vehicle right now that I can demonstrate this thing on. So what I'm going to do is take it out of the box, show you what it all comes with, and then I'm going to go over to the vehicle and show you how to diagnose. Alrighty, so once you open up the box, this is what's in the package. In addition to what you see on the screen, you do get an instruction manual right here, which is going to tell you about how to operate the unit. You get the uh, diagnostic unit itself, a USB cable to connect it to your computer because it has computer uh, functionality. And in addition to that, you have a OBD2 to DB15 connector, which plugs right into the top of the unit there. So what I'm going to do is get all of this hooked up, namely the DB cable to the unit. And I'm going to go take it over to the car and show you how to plug it in and how it works. So we're here in the vehicle now and we're ready to test this unit out. You can see I have the DB connector uh, connected to the top of the unit and I have the cable going down underneath the dash to the OBD2 port. So what I'm going to do in this particular case is do an OBD2 diagnosis, uh, scan the systems using the OBD2 function on this. However, before I do that, I want to point out that you have the ABS and SRS function, which will allow you to reset things like your airbag lights or to actuate your ABS pump if you need to bleed your brakes or bleed your pump. You have a steering angle sensor function, which is going to allow you to reset your steering angle sensor zero or neutral position. You have the setup screen, which allows you to change the functions of the unit itself, like the beeping buttons and whatnot. Um, playback and update. So that's going to be an update uh, for the actual firmware of the unit. And playback, I believe, is going to be freeze frame data or data that you've saved, like uh, trouble codes from a particular vehicle. So to do an OBD2 diagnosis, I'm going to hit enter on OBD2, wait for it to load. and we'll be back once it's loaded. All right, so we're here at the initial OBD2 diagnosis screen. You can see we have our MIL status as on, one code found, and that's the information that matters to us right now. So we're gonna hit OK, and it's gonna give us a couple different options. What I wanna do is read codes, stored codes, and it asks me to select the vehicle manufacturer because it's a manufacturer-specific code that's found right now. So. I'm going to scroll down, and this particular vehicle that we're working on is a Mercedes. So we're going to go down to M. And you have the option for Mercedes diesel or Mercedes gas. If you're doing a Mercedes, make sure you select the correct one. And right here it says P1542, refer to vehicle service manual for what the code is. In my case, I know that this code is for a failed accelerator pedal position sensor. So from here, what I need to do is diagnose the accelerator pedal position sensor and see what's wrong with it. So, save the code, just for future reference, go back, and if I read live data, I can see what the accelerator pedal position sensor data feeds back to me. So, once it's loaded all of the live streams, I'm going to come back with that and show you what I'm going to do. Now I'm here in the live data feed option, and you can see I have live feeds of all sorts of different data from the vehicle that I can feed back to the scanner. What I'm going to do is scroll down to accelerator pedal, which should be here, not too far down. Keep in mind that the vehicle is off at the moment, so a lot of these are reading as zero or not applicable. And... There we go. Throttle position, I think I skipped past it in the first round. So you can see it says 19.2, which is interesting because I have my foot off the throttle. Now, if you watch, I'll push it all the way down to the floor. No response and very slow response, and it maximizes out at 28.2. This throttle position sensor, we tested this out before. We know it's dead. My foot's off of it now, and it's at 8.6. It's just reading completely inconsistently. And earlier in the day, this thing was pegged at 100% with no foot on it. So that throttle position sensor or accelerator pedal position sensor is completely toast. That's something that we're going to need to change. And just using this unit alone, let us know that that was the problem as opposed to something like an electronically actuated throttle body or any other part of the vehicle. So that is the reason why you have a scan tool like this. In addition to that, the, the particular reason that we picked this one up 
is in order to do ABS and SRS um, reset functionality. So one thing that I ran into not that long ago was whenever I was installing a stereo in one of my vehicles, I pulled the dash out and I had to unplug the airbag uh, warning light on that vehicle. And whenever I plugged it back in and started the vehicle, the airbag warning light on the dash came on. So in order to reset that, I had to go through a pretty complicated procedure of turning the car on and off and, and waiting certain amounts of time for things to, to click over. And in order to bypass all of that, I could have had this scan tool and just gone through a couple clicks through the user interface and, and reset that. So great thing to have for that from that standpoint. This can also read manufacturer specific module codes. So it can read um, brake system faults if you have a, a CAN bus equipped vehicle. It can read obviously the steering angle sensor. It can read the live data feed from that as well as reset that. So overall, it's a great unit to have. It's kind of an all-in-one unit. It's not as advanced as some of the really, really high-end ones or manufacturer-specific ones like the Mercedes Star system, but it's a great thing to have and definitely something that would be awesome to keep, say, in your trunk or just in your toolbox. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.